Happy and harmonious years before my arrival, sent Papa off to join the heavenly choir. <laughs> Reduced to even deeper poverty by my father's death. Welcome to sunny Acton. 60 years ago, this street doubled for Ballam in Kind Hearts and Coronets, one of the greatest releases from Ealing Studios, who are actually located just a couple of miles down that road. And this week, Kind Hearts find its way back into UK cinemas. <laughs> I shot an arrow in the air. She fell to earth in Barclay Square. Nowadays, when you mention Ealing Studios, people tend to think of something which is quaint, something which is quintessentially British, something which is warm and cuddly. At the moment, Ealing is probably best known for those rather wretched St Trinian's reboots, which have been hugely popular and successful, but which, let's face it, are at very best fluffy. Didn't used to be like that. I remember the first time I saw Kind Hearts and Coronets. It was at the Phoenix in East Finchley. It was a half term, and they packed out the whole half term with great double bills of British movies. I saw Man in the White Suit. I saw Passport to Pimlico. I saw The Lady Killers on a double bill with Kind Hearts and Coronets. Now, I imagine that many of you have already seen it, but if you haven't, what you need to know is it's a comedy about a serial killer. It's a film about revenge and murder and infidelity. There are loads of jokes about hanging, and it's a film which has a fairly poisonous view of the British social system. Yes, it's funny, but all the jokes are extremely dark, and in some ways it gets into the same territory that Chaplin got into with Mr. Verdoux, and remember what trouble that caused him. Apparently, the head of the studio said to the director, Robert Hamer, you are trying to sell that most unsaleable commodity to the British, irony. Good luck with that. A day or so later, I received a letter from Lionel. He requested an interview with me at his house on a matter of some delicacy. I was somewhat perturbed, for nine times out of ten, what is referred to as a matter of some delicacy is, in point of fact, one of extreme indelicacy. There are plenty of well-known stories about the making of Kind Hearts and Coronets. For example, the fact that Alec Guinness was originally only offered four roles, but he demanded that he play eight, nine if you count the painting that he sat for. The fact that the ultra-virtuous widow was played by Valerie Hobson, who ended up marrying John Profumo, he of the Profumo scandal. Saddest of all is the fact that Robert Hamer, the director, never went on to achieve the success which he so richly deserved. Very few people had faith in Kind Hearts and Coronets when it was being made, but it was a big success. But it was also very edgy. Edgy enough, in fact, that the Americans demanded a 10-second addition to the end of the film to clarify that the wrongdoers got their comeuppance in accordance with the Hayes Code. If you've never seen Kind Hearts and Coronets, I really envy you. Get yourself down to a cinema, watch it, enjoy it, and remind yourself just how edgy filmmaking could be in the good old, bad old days. <laughs> 